like our technology, we believe in our technology. It's automated to a level where one person can operate it. This isn't a 70s disco, it's a paddock. But here, there's no soil to till, no bugs or disease to contend with, and whether it's sunny outside doesn't matter in the slightest, thanks to the tens of thousands of twinkling LED lights. This is vertical farming, where the crop is grown entirely inside an industrial warehouse basically go from seed to harvest of green leafy vegetables, salad greens, herbs inside about a 28 day period. It looks and is pretty high tech. Fully operational, the vertical farm can produce around 500 kilograms of cut leafy greens per week, 52 weeks a year. And it's almost entirely automated. We're sitting in uh, the control room of an, what we call an XA series automated warehouse growing system. And it's automated to a level where one person can operate it totally. Today, that one person is John Leslie, a director of Vertical Farm Systems. With just the click of a mouse, John's able to set the entire harvest and planting process in motion. First, seeds are planted via an automatic seeder, directly into clay pebbles, then watered with something dramatically referred to as an organic germination accelerant, and transported down the line to their new home for the next month. The system moves that growing tray towards a climate cell, it lifts it to the correct level, there are eight levels in a climate cell, and then it opens the door relevant, pushes in the tray, and the tray will stay in there for 28 days while it grows. Meanwhile, inside the climate cell, everything is kept under control by computers. Light, water, humidity and temperature are all strictly regulated by large dehumidifiers and about 60,000 LED lights. The crop is what's referred to as bioponic. Biologically active microbes are added to the clay pebbles to maximise plant health and growth. But it's different to hydroponic because while it's soilless, it's not grown in water, although the crop does still get a good drink. We use a flood and drain system, so basically in the 28 days, nothing touches the leaf. There's no top watering, so that leaf that comes out is, is sort of pharmaceutical grade food, almost. At the end of the grow cycle, the mature plants are lowered onto the transport rails and automatically harvested. The bench is washed and sterilised, organic matter collected for composting, and the clay pebbles recovered and reused. Then the whole process begins again. A cycle for a tray is 12 minutes. To plant it and to uh, put it into the cell, and for the other tray that is pushed out uh, the other end of the cell to come down and to get harvested, and then to be washed and reloaded and ready to seed again. This technology has taken almost a decade to develop, troubleshoot and fine tune. It obviously raises questions though about replacing jobs. An operation of this size would generally be manned by a dozen or more people. In the building phase, it's taken a lot of manpower. We had to engineer and design the whole system and make sure that it's structurally correct and functionally correct. And then looking for suppliers, we had to get a lot of tooling made for injection moulding and casting and extruding. And now we have 43 suppliers globally that provide all our components for us. 
and it's all happening here, tucked away inside a shed on a picturesque farm near the small township of Yandina on Queensland's Sunshine Coast. We envisage two years, but understanding the, the concept of vertical farming and the risks and hazards in relation to the medium that you use, the nutrients that you use, the ability to be sustainable, um, has made it a lot longer journey than what it, we thought it was going to be, but we're sort of here now. So nine years on, uh, the journey's been worth it. The thing about creating a farm environment for yourself is you can pretty much do it anywhere. Including at these bustling inner city food markets where all the action happens from inside shipping containers. We're actually uh, three metres wide by three metres high and 12 metres in length. So we're the same length as a traditional shipping container, but we're actually a little bit wider and a little bit higher. Um, that enables us to be able to produce um, larger amounts of leafy greens in our system and um, give the plants an optimal um, space to be able to grow in. James Pateras grew up on a more traditional broadacre farm in Victoria. I left the family farm during a, a devastating drought period, so when I decided to return, I decided to return in the space of ag tech. The tower actually is held in by a bulkhead and a gutter system, um, and that's where obviously the water is captured um, and recycled. Modular farming, as it's known, is similar to vertical farming, with a few key differences. It's smaller and hydroponic. They're well established in the US and Canada, but still finding their place in Australia. Leafy greens are grown in 230 vertical towers under special lights positioned to promote the best growth. The lights vary over a 24 hour period to simulate day and night. Uh, a lot of our air is recycled. Um, we retreat the air through a UV light and then we actually dehumidify that air and then feed it through the system. Um, with the dehumidification, um, we actually capture a lot of our water. Um, so we're currently in a full farm. We're about 40 litres of water a day required. And we think that we could probably get that down to a zero um, requirement of external water. This entire container farm can be controlled from a smartphone. However, it still requires a substantial time investment from people, about 25 hours a week. We've achieved yields of around four tonnes a year of um, spinach and kale, and we produce about one and a half tonnes worth of herbs a year. In terms of lettuce, depending on the, the size of lettuce that you're growing, um, you can achieve up to about a thousand heads of lettuce a week. There you go, Pete. Awesome, looking good. Yeah, straight out of the farm, cut today. For now, the farm grows produce that's sold to the vendors at the markets. A lot of them are interested in growing different types of herbs or fancy produce for a lot of their garnishes that they put on their food. The main perk of container farming is what's happening outside really doesn't matter. So remote or isolated places where the climate can be harsh and getting access to fresh seasonal produce is difficult could really benefit. We did a lot of research around food miles and the supply chain logistics of getting fresh food from our traditional sources. Areas in rural and isolated Australia were initially where we thought the modular farm would serve best. And um, of course, mining towns where there's a large consortium of people there who uh, demand uh, fresh uh, food. But like lots of new technologies, the question most people have is what does it cost? At the moment the modular farm costs about $148,000. The idea of it is that they'll be able to plug and grow once that farm is delivered. We always stress to our customers that they still need to become farmers and learn a lot about um, farming uh, as, as, as they go. And aside from the initial cost outlay, there are also running costs to consider. The big one, unsurprisingly, is electricity. 
To run the modular farm, uh, it would cost about $65 a day, and the farm itself uses on-grid electricity for now. Uh, we're also developing a off-grid module as part of our um, farming suite. The vertical farming system from Yandina is also not cheap. The facility next door with the three climate cells and all the automation is around about the $1.2 million mark in Australian dollars. 38% of our grow cost is electricity, so it is a capital intensive program. Originally, John and Ashley dreamt of taking their technology to the most needy countries and feeding the world. Now, the men are more realistic about the market for their farm systems, targeting people less concerned about the price of food and more interested in quality, freshness and food miles. At the moment, Canada, for example, is importing up to 95% of its salad grains from South America or California. And they can, there's no reason they can, can't grow them locally with this kind of technology. It was a great harvest. That lettuce, that new lettuce is wonderful. Excellent. Yeah, getting a really good yield off that. Alrighty, I'll go and put these in the fridge and um, leave you guys to it. Thank you. They plan to export the machinery, install it, commission it, and stay on for 28 days to ensure the first successful crop. But they're also hoping to find markets at home. We'd like to be the joint venture or license, but we want to be the farmer in Australia. We see passionately that we care about the food and the quality of the food. Um, we like our technology, we believe in our technology. So this end of the factory here is our seeding end. So we grow and on Saturdays, they give benches, anyone who's interested a chance to come and see what they're up to. Play. We take them in, give them a taste test, they have a pick and look around and it's, I think the scale of it surprises some people that it's um, as large and sophisticated as what it, what it is. So the other thing that we do is when you're above relative 35% humidity, we actually become a water producer. So these three cells here will make about 12,000 litres of distilled water every month. Come on, come on, where are you? Visitors also get to see the other outside elements of the farm and how it all fits together. We've got 69 acres here, so there's probably about 50 of that we've got the cattle on. Um, we're heading to around about 150 head. The cattle are grown on paddocks where the nutrient that comes from the vertical farm is used to improve soil quality and watered using rainwater collected off the shed. They catch and store about three million litres here on an average year. Cattle are happy, got nice big green grass. We're hoping that that's going to help us when through dry spells. They've recently opened up a farm shop at their regional warehouse. People can see and buy the homegrown beef and of course, the leafy greens, all harvested and packed the day prior. We're wanting to start the discussion about the quality of food that can be produced in this sort of environment. So to do that you need to um, let people see it, touch it, feel it um, and actually experience what it looks like in a farm like this. Some people call them the farms of the future. But they're already here and they're growing almost as quickly as what's growing within them and challenging the way we think about producing food. We don't believe that we're going to expel all the traditional farmers, but what we're able to do is introduce another means in which food can be sourced and can be sourced locally. Once we're up and running, we'd like to expand here, double our production. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it'll only be the start of the, the next journey. Yeah.